I think what's pretty special is that you brought up, I wasn't even going to go there, but I have a picture somewhere, because back when I was working with the Walleye Insider, of your boat up in the uh, in the trees or the mud bank there. Oh, that was that tournament. Yeah, that's... And uh, that's a story. We're in New York no more. <laughs> you know, you go fish a tournament and you have to come... You have to get your boat towed out with a wrecker. That was uh, pretty special. But don't, anyway, that tournament, uh, I had found a spot that was a uh, little creek that come into the main body of water just south of here. Um, Roach and, and those guys were 40, 50 miles downstream. There was all your leaders. Well, I had found this little creek um, where the, there was walleye spawning in there. They're all big females. And um, it was a heck of a thing to get into. Uh, I'd go under this little bridge. Now, this is just a stream. goes into the main channel. I'd have to take the windshield off the boat, and I'd push my boat up underneath this bridge, and I'd get up in there by this beaver house, and it was uh, it was every cast. They were all over. So in South Dakota at that time, you could have, uh, per boat, two overs, 18s, and the rest had to be between 15 and 18. There were only overs up in there. It was every cast. So every morning that I went in there, I made my four casts, got my four overs, and I was never particular. Well, that put me in fourth or fifth going into day three. So in day three, I go, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to be a little particular. I can win this tournament in this creek. I start up under there. I take the windshield off. I get the boat up under the bridge, and there's a little sandbar right in front of the bridge. Well, I know that big lund up there, and, I mean, it's it stops dead. And I'm thinking, what the heck? Now, the wind's blowing downstream like crazy. And I'm thinking, what the heck? I go, ah, shit, I'll push the boat over it. So I coax my partner, amateur partner. We jumped out of the boat, and we physically pushed that big lun. I had a 20-foot lun at the, at the time. Pushed it over this little sandbar. I get over the sandbar. I get up to the beaver house. I tie up. I make a cast. I catch a fish. It's an over. And the camera guy happened to say something. He goes... Is the water coming out of here, out of this creek? I'm thinking, what the hell is he talking about? So I turn around where I just tied up to this this uh, beaver house, beaver dam, and I'm looking where I tied <laughs> underwater, and it's showing. I mean, I've been in here 15 minutes, and I've lost another four inches of water, and I go, holy shit, I need to get out of here. I'll never get over that sandbar. So long story short, I get to the sandbar. We jump out to go to push over that Lund is not going over. Here I am. I'm stuck. Right? I can't get out of this crick arm. So I sit there. I'm trying to figure out what the heck to do. I go, well, I mean, I can't get out of here. It is what it is. So I walk up to the highway. Flag a guy down. He's going into town. I get in. <laughs> I go into town. And I go to the way in. And I'm staying in there. And, and you know, Roach, That by that time, Roach had come back. So it go for on. That's when the took place that uh you know i took his fish up to the weighing for him well i'm standing there and a guy says you're todd frank in the crowd there i'm watching the weigh-in i go yeah i am he goes hey your boat down there in the creek i go it is he goes well how are you going to get it out i says well i'll just wait for the water wind to stop blowing what had happened is the wind blew so hard downstream it created a suction and it pulled the water out of this bay he goes well just so you know he says i live right there and when the water goes out of that bay, it could be three, four, five days before it comes back. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, that's not going to work. <laughs> I want to get out of here. So I get my truck, and I drive down there, and I'm standing there, and I'm studying in it. And I'm thinking, oh, man, if I could just get a tow truck. I go, listen, here's the scenario. I said, I'm down in this creek arm. I can't get out. But I think if I have a tow truck, you could hook onto my boat and uh, pull it up onto my spring. He goes, let me come down and see what you got going down there. <laughs> so he comes down and uh, he looks at it and he goes, yeah, he says, I think you can get, I think I can get you out of there. We got to go up, talk to the farmer. See How if much I money can... you got, boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, and he, th that's the next thing. I got no money, basically. <laughs> so he goes, we just got to go up to the farmer. We'll talk to the farmer, see if I can drive down that field. He says, well, get your, your suburban and trailer down. In the, if you can back that thing down into cattails, he says, I can come right over top of you with my boom. And he says, you go out there and hook onto your boat. I'll pull your boat up into the trailer. And then he says, you're going to be stuck, and I'll just winch your suburban and trailer out. And this is 
10 o'clock at night now. Wayne is at 3, 4 o'clock. So he goes, uh, he gets my boat up on there. He goes to hook onto me and pull me out of the swamp. Well, he's stuck. And I'm thinking, oh, man. See, that's, I thought the story was the tow truck needed a tow truck. Oh, yeah. I go, oh, man. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm wondering, I'm thinking how much money I got in my pocket. It isn't much. And I'm thinking, this is going to be 500 This is going to be 1000 bucks to get out of here. And he goes, oh, don't worry about it. He says, I got a bigger wrecker. And he's so he goes back and gets this tractor trailer size wrecker, comes back down there. This is 11 o'clock, midnight. At, no. <laughs> I've been messing with this thing for hours. He hooks on to his wrecker, pulls that out, hooks on to me, pulls my Suburban out, and I'm out finally. And I'm thinking, oh, the spill is going to be crazy. How am I going to pay this guy? I got no money. <laughs> so he gets all done, and he goes, uh, I go, how much do you owe you? He goes, ah, 50 bucks. He said, it's not your fault I got stuck. Only in South Dakota, right? No, <laughs> no. Bucks. Yeah, so I had, I don't know what I had in my pocket. I reached and I'd give them everything I had, just and I had enough money to get home. And um, anyway, I got out of that mess. Mm-hmm.